This episode of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Ocean City Department of Tourism. Good afternoon and welcome to SunFest 2014 in Ocean City. I'm Lisa Bryan. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. It is a huge year for the annual fall celebration, the 40th anniversary. Hey, 40 years, that's quite an accomplishment. So we're celebrating on Delmarva Life today by bringing you all things SunFest. Over the next hour, we're going back in time to give you a history of Ocean City's biggest festival. From its iconic fishing pier, where so many have cast a line hoping for that big catch, to the town's famous boardwalk that's just steps away from the festivities. A lot has changed in 40 years, not only at Sunfest, but in the town of Ocean City itself. We'll meet a man who's trying to preserve those memories one page at a time. We're also learning how the town opens its doors and its heart to a special group of children and their families. These children are fighting life-threatening illnesses, spending days and nights in the hospital. But with Believe in Tomorrow, they get a chance to leave that all behind for a few days and concentrate on fun. Yay! And the sights. Oh, the sights in Ocean City. There is so much to see. Did you know there is a museum dedicated to maritime pets? Guys, you know that's right up our alley because we certainly love our pets. So much to see and Jimmy, so much to do. Let's go fly a kite. There's certainly no shortage of them this weekend, and the weather looks absolutely flawless. From the sky to the sea, we're balancing it all today. We can't be so close to the water without getting in. I'm going to stay on dry land, thank you very much, and visit the vendors who make SunFest what it is today. We'll share their stories, including one woman's who's made it her goal to bring you magic. Your mouth's gonna feel like it's med magic when you pop one of these guys into it. The famous oyster fritters. The ladies who make these fine fritters welcome me into their kitchen and put me to the test to see if I can whip one together. And that just touches on the food here at Sunfest. I can't wait to stuff my face. And go ahead, let the kid out in you. We even visit the family fun spot, Trimper's Rides and Amusements. Carousel ride, anyone? Del Marble Life SunFest 2014 starts right now. Well, the end of summer 2014 officially happens on Monday. So here in Ocean City, the whole town makes sure it goes out with a bang. And that's been the case for 40 years. That's right, this is the 40th year for SunFest. My first. Your first. So Sean, you're probably wondering just how big is SunFest? Just to let you know, there's over 150,000 people gonna make their way to Ocean City for this historical event. Just because the calendar says summer is winding down, the fun certainly isn't in Ocean City. I've always said there is life after Labor Day. Ocean City Tourism Director Donna Abbott says for 40 years, the town has embraced the arrival of the fall season with Sunfest. Many, many years ago, once Labor Day came and went, this town was pretty quiet. Uh, you could shoot a cannon down the boardwalk and not hit another soul. So this event came to be and it has grown in popularity and, and has helped people to discover that there's more to Ocean City than just your traditional summer season. The celebration was born in the 1970s, but on a much smaller scale. It was also a six-day event, so it was originally called Save Six for September. Back in 1975, a few business leaders got together and decided to celebrate the end of the summer season. It was the third uh, weekend after Labor Day. The weather was gorgeous, so they used a parking lot up on 7th Street, put together a few booths with some food and some crafts, and uh, had such a good time with that and drew some people that they decided to go to the mayor and council, get a little funding, make it a little bigger the next year. They moved it to uh, Trimper's uh, Amusements near a uh, parking lot near here. It grew even more. The weather was spectacular. People started hearing about it. And then the late Mr. Pete Richardson went to uh, the mayor and council and then Mayor Harry Kelly put him in charge of erecting a Sunfest festival here down at the inlet lot and the rest is history. For years the locals have known when the white tents go up the Sunfest fun begins and it's not just the locals. It's grown into one of the top festivals in the country. In fact the American Bus Association and the National Tour Association have ranked Sunfest in the top 100 events in all of the country. So you're going to find arts and crafts down here, you're going to find delicious food and live music from start to finish throughout the event. Also referred to as the second season or shoulder season, a lot of visitors prefer this time of year. It takes a while for this ocean to cool off and so that keeps our temperatures a little milder in the fall season and uh, you know it is not as crowded let's face it than the peak summer season is so it's a more relaxed environment, the locals love it, the beach is still great to go to and enjoy the boardwalk of course all the activities here on the boardwalk so it's that, it's that special little time of year both for the locals and for those who still want to come to Ocean City. 
SunFest has certainly grown over the years, but at least one thing remains the same. People from near and far look forward to this rite of passage from summer to fall. I think the future for SunFest is more of the same, really. I mean, every year they try to bring in new entertainment, new arts and crafts, but it's such a, a wonderful event. Why change it, really? I mean, I think, you know, there'll be tweaks here and there, but the tents are gorgeous. All we need is some great weather and we're good to go. Well, good to go indeed. As a matter of fact, Sean, the weather is going to be gorgeous with temperatures in the 70s. Yeah, and I have to agree with Donna. These tents are a gorgeous sight. Let's head under one right now and learn about one of the key components of this festival. Lisa? From the families who travel here and visit to the ones who live here and participate, SunFest is about bringing people together. Berlin artist Chris Maxer rejuvenates old decking boards from a renovation a few years ago. So far, he says he's taken about 90 photos, turning them into canvases showcasing iconic Ocean City spots like the downtown boardwalk arch that greets visitors as they approach the boards. Another example, Shinkatig's Catherine Kiss. And whether it's with paint, feathers, fabric, or even glitter, what she makes is designed to take you to a magical place far, far away. Shikatig artist Catherine Kiss surrounds herself with beauty. From top to bottom, her studio is adorned with fabric, lace, and beads. And when she's here, she's in a special place. It's almost like you disappear. You know, when I decide that I'm going to sit down, I, the world goes away and I can start in the morning and next thing I know it, it's 10 o'clock at night. And for her, it all comes easy. Labeling her style of art, not so much. I just want to say whimsical fantasy. Mm -hmm. That's, it's kind of my own style. But that doesn't mean her style doesn't evolve with the times. So you, you have to adapt to, you know, what's kind of popular and, you know, what, what works and, and um, like, for example, um, I went through a Marie Antoinette phase and that really was quite popular and the reds and the golds and stuff. And then, you know, when movies make it big, that too. So Marie Antoinette became popular and then, of course, Pirates of the Caribbean, that became popular. So you kind of move in there and you learn to move your art with it, but yet you, you stay true to your, your vision. Most of her work involves fairies or mermaids. I started actually on fairies. To me, mermaids are really just a water element, a fairy. And so I had worked mostly dealing with fairies. Um, and then I started doing mermaids, I want to say probably close to 15, 16 years ago. Adding to the allure is their deep, hypnotic eyes. Catherine says the inspiration for the eyes come from some pretty famous faces. Being an artist, you also need a model, mm -hmm. and this way you get proportion, you get glimpses of soul and essence and things like that. So I will go through some of the most popular magazines and pull out beautiful pictures of like Cameron Diaz and Kate Hudson and things like that. And I've used those as my models and I turn them into my version of them as a water element. Catherine has been creating art as long as she can remember. She started making dolls when she became a mother. I love fabrics and textiles. Um, I started actually when I was pregnant with my daughter and I started making her dolls. Most of the materials used for her dolls is repurposed. She's always on the hunt for vintage fabric, making no two dolls alike. And each one, even though I've done hundreds of like the, the cloth dolls, they each come out with their own little personality and some can be quite snippety and you know some can be beautiful and dramatic and so they all they're all unique and whether it's a doll or a painting what she hopes buyers of her art take with them is also special a piece of that beauty a piece of the etheric a piece of something more than than what we perceive as reality that fantasy even though you know it, it, it is fantasy there is a part of that and what we think we are, what we think we create, what we do in our minds matters. And that is what I do in my mind. I create and I take it from thought and put it into manifested what I perceive as beauty. 
You can find Catherine Kiss and her art here in Tent 2. And Jimmy and Sean, when she's not here, she's in Chincoteague where she has a shop on Main Street. Man, that is a lot of good local creative talent. Someplace I gotta go. And there's some place that you want to be sure to stop by. The Ocean City Fishing Pier. The decking extends out into the Atlantic, giving anglers and sightseers the perfect vantage point. But the pier has seen its share of ups and downs. Who could forget when Superstorm Sandy tore off the end? Up next, we're gonna take a look back at the history of this iconic structure. And as you just saw moments ago, the Ocean City Boardwalk is a spectacular iconic site. Coming up, we'll tell you how the famous walkway got its start as a summer memory-making destination for generations to come. And speaking of memories, we'll introduce you to a local author who after seven years and 170 interviews is meeting his goal of keeping the memories of Ocean City alive. Del Mar Life, OC Sunfest 2014, we'll be right back. Del Marva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Del Marva Peninsula since 1897. Your local York and LG dealers, and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <laughs> 